Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm gonna show you how to compare and order rational numbers. Comparing and ordering rational numbers. When comparing and ordering rational numbers, you want to change all your numbers into the same type of number when it's needed. And by that I mean change all of your numbers into fractions or decimals or percents. Then you compare using a number line. I do want to emphasize that you're only changing all of the numbers into the same type of number when it's needed. You don't always need to do this. Let's move to example number one so you can understand what I mean. For this example, they want us to write a less than or greater than or an equal to sign. I have negative 17 and I have negative 16. If you remember what your number line looks like, and I'll draw one in right here. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to draw my number line in right here. I'm going to draw my arrows because numbers never end. They keep going. So let's say I have a zero here and I have a 5 here, negative 5 actually, and I have a negative 10 here, and I have a negative 15, and a negative 20. My negative 17 is going to be around right here. My negative 16 is going to be around right here. I've written negative 17 and negative 16 on top just so it doesn't look quite so cluttered down here. But if we remember going to the right of our number line, then numbers always get larger. So I'd like to write a addition sign at the top on the right and a subtraction sign on the left. So as we go to the right on our number line, the numbers always get larger and larger and larger. So there would be a positive 5 over here these numbers are larger these numbers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller so that means that negative 16 is larger than negative 17 and remember when we use our inequalities uh, some people or some teachers uh, explain the inequality as being a mouth to an alligator so the alligator always wants to eat the number that is more so in this case, the alligator would eat the negative 16 because negative 16 is more than negative 17. So for this example, I didn't have to worry about changing um, the forms of my number. They were both um, integers, so I didn't have to worry about converting. Let's move on to example number two. Example number two. Okay, for this example, when we first look at things, we may think, okay, I need to put both of the numbers in the same form. So I either need to make this fraction into a decimal, or I need to make this decimal into a fraction. So that we're dealing with two numbers that are, like, a little more similar looking. Okay. But, if you look, the 83 hundredths has a negative sign in front of it. So this is negative 83 hundredths. That means, on a number line before we even do any type of true calculations I know that the negative I know that the negative 83 hundredths is going to be on my left side of the zero and my one sixth is going to be somewhere on the right side of my zero and that's because it's positive and the 83 hundredths is negative I know that anything that's on the right of another number is larger than the other number so I know that the one-sixth is larger without really doing any math calculations I know that a positive number is larger than a negative number so that one was pretty easy too let's move on to example number three example number three this time both of my numbers are negative they're also both decimals I don't have to work that hard this time because they're in the same form they're both decimals. I'm going to graph these on a number line to give me a better idea. Here's my zero. Both of my numbers are negative, so I know that I'm going to be working on the left side of the zero. Here's where you want to make sure you keep things in order. Negative 4500 is going to be closer 
to the zero, then negative 50 hundredths, or this could be called negative 5 tenths. Just like before, the numbers that are on the right are larger and the numbers that are on the left are smaller. So I know that negative 45 hundredths is larger than negative 50 hundredths or negative 5 tenths. Let's move on to example number 4. Example number 4. I'm drawing my number line. I'm putting a 0. I'm going to draw two marks. I'm going to figure out which one should be closer to the zero and which one should be further from the zero. This one again isn't super complicated because 10 is a full value. It's not a fraction. One sixth is a fraction. It does not have a whole number, meaning one sixth is less than one. Okay? So, because 1 sixth is less than 1, I know that 1 is going to be closer to 0 than the 10 will be. So, these notches are not drawn to scale, but 1 sixth is going to be closer to the 0 than negative 10. Because negative 10 is going to be way out. Okay? This is 10 whole. We haven't even gotten to 1, but 1 would be somewhere in between this negative 10 and this negative 1 6. Let's move on to example number 5. Example number 5. Example number 5 appears to be the first example that we have where we're going to have to do a little bit more work. Right now, my first thought is to put all of the numbers in the same form. This is going to make things um, easier for me because when I'm comparing a fraction to a decimal to a whole number sometimes that can be tricky because they're in totally different forms but because we're dealing with integers we do have something that's gonna help us out a little bit and that is the fact that one of our numbers is negative and the other ones are positive because the negative 7 12 is negative I don't even have to worry about um, making it look like the other two numbers, okay? Because I know a negative number, no matter what it looks like, is going to be on the left side of my zero, and it's the only one. So I know before we even begin that negative 7 twelfths is the number with the smallest value. 75 hundredths and 72, these are pretty easy to put down on my number line as well. And again, I'm just putting them down on my number line roughly um, because I know that 75 hundredths is less than 1. So it's going to be close to the 0. Um, it's going to look like this. 75 hundredths. And my 72 is going to be way down here somewhere. Again, this is not drawn to scale. But it just gives you enough of an idea to be able to order the numbers from least to greatest. So the smallest of my numbers is 7 twelfths, or negative 7 twelfths actually. Then 75 hundredths. Then 72. So ordering these numbers from least to greatest will look like this. Negative 7 twelfths, 75 hundredths, and 72. Let's move on to example number 6. Example number 6. I have negative 1 and 23 hundredths, negative 1 and 2 tenths, and negative 3 twentieths. Okay, here's my first example where they're all negative and I have to order them on a number line. So I am going to have to do a little more work this time because I don't know which one is going to be larger or which one is going to be smaller right off the bat. I do know right off the bat that all of them are going to be on the left side of the zero because they're all negative. Now, after looking at these numbers for a second more, I can see that the 3 
twentieths, the negative three twentieths, is going to be the number that's closest to my zero before I even begin. The reason I can tell that is because three twentieths is less than one. I don't have a whole number out here. This isn't a mixed number or anything. It's saying three of twenty. So it would take twenty just to be, you know, at a value of one. I don't have that. So that means one and two tenths has a value of one plus some extra, and one in twenty three hundredths has a value of one plus some extra. So I can see that both of these are greater than one, and I can see that this is less than one. I'm referring to absolute values right now, not including the negative signs, okay? So, because this um, has a smaller absolute value than one, it's going to be my closest to zero. Between these two, I'm going to actually stack the numbers on top of each other because they're decimals. Okay, between these two numbers, I've actually stacked them on top of each other um, because they're decimals. And I'm going to add a zero in right here. Okay, and I'm going to compare these. This is like one and twenty three hundreds, and this is one and twenty hundredths. I'm not worrying about the negative sign just yet. Now, I know absolute value wise, one and twenty three hundredths has the bigger value. But remember, we're working with the negative side, so we know that the number that has the smallest absolute value is going to be closer to zero. So I know that my negative one and two tenths is going to be closer to zero than my negative one and twenty three hundredths. Okay? So. For this example, I ordered from least to greatest by considering the signs, okay? I also compared my two decimals, I stacked them on top of each other and added a zero so they had the same amount of place values and that made it a little easier for me to compare. I know that the number with the smallest absolute value is going to be closest to the zero, so I wrote it closer to the zero. Then my negative one in twenty three hundredths is further from my zero. So these numbers in order actually are the same order that they were given to us. Negative 1 and 23 hundredths, negative 1 and 2 tenths, and negative 3 twentieths. That was my last example. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to click like, then head over to supereasymath.com for more math tutorials, printable video notes, worksheets, and more.